Testing one, two, three. Say something, bro. Testing one, two, three. Test, 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 test. And Hans. Test, 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 test. Yeah. Do you know Gibson went freaking bankrupt? Gibson went bankrupt? Yeah. I started our podcast, by the way, just now. That's fine. Just, just, going, just, just, just yakking. Yeah, no, Gibson went bankrupt two days ago. When? I Come on. Actually, yesterday. So that guitar, those two guitars are worth a lot more, maybe. Or oh, not, or nothing. <laughs> a lot less. No, I think that it's going to it's gonna probably be built better. But I mean, it's insane to think that a company like Gibson went bankrupt. Like, how the fuck does a company like Gibson, one of the best American-made guitars ever, go bankrupt? That's some serious, like, lack of leadership going on or something fucked up. So it's so bad that, like, you know, you have this phenomenal company that could be that mismanaged to go fucking bankrupt. That's so sad. Iconic. Yeah. Crazy. I, I am uh, with my friend Hans Mollenkamp. Did I pronounce that close? 100%. Nice. Dude, um, so we've only been friends a short while. Uh, there's a lot of things we share in common, uh, love for certain quality items, but, uh, you're like this Renaissance artist man living in, in 2017, 18, since I've been following you on Instagram, which is where I first caught track of you. And, uh, I was kind of blown away as I started looking around at all the things you do. And every time, you know, like a week goes by and I'm, I uncover some new passion or talent from, from art to even your writing. Your writing is, is deep and intense. And, you know, we, we've had a couple of meals together where you talk about your background and stuff. And I wanted you on the No Fear show uh, because I think your story is incredibly inspiring and important. And, uh, you know, we, uh, uh, for those of you don't, who don't know, Hans, you got to check out his Instagram and you got to spend like an hour or two, just like block it out in your day and just scroll the, the pictures. Recently, you, you posted one from Russia. Tell us about that. Just let's just jump in there just to blow people's minds because only because I think that uh, uh, maybe you helped influence the election now that I'm seeing some of these. Uh, this. Yeah, well, I mean, I wouldn't say that there was any real collusion going on because I posted <laughs> it up. But uh, no, I mean, I was in Russia a couple years ago and, you know, visiting the M1 facility where Fedor trains out of. And sometimes you wind up in interesting, peculiar places and you have a camera and people ask you to take photos. And right. And who was in this picture? Uh, John Claude Van Damme, Fedor, Fedor's brother, um, and Putin. And, <laughs> and also and there's, a, there's another Italian guy that I, I, I'm not too fond of that was in the photo too. Right. And, and, and Putin. Um Amazing. So I'm going to actually, uh, what I'm going to do is I want you to like sort of start at the beginning. We've talked about this twice now and, and it's, and it's important because you're, uh, in, in terms of your aura and your energy, you're a scary dude. You know, you're a big guy, you fight, you train, uh, you have, uh, fought, uh, both in the street and in, in the ring. Um, and, and you're friends with almost every badass fucking fighter on the planet. Uh, and you're big dude, dude. How much you weigh? Probably two twenty five now. Two twenty five. Yeah. Um, and and I'm so more in shape now, though. <laughs> right, <laughs> so, right. Than, than before. Well, what's 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 cool? I mean, this you know, and and how just just so so people know is why I I I don't remember what was the original uh, photo that got me onto your your site, but then Maybe it was a wheelchair re- photo. I don't even, it depends on when it was released. I mean, I mean, there's two major catastrophic, catastrophic events that have happened over the last two years between my lower back fusion. Right. And my... It was, it was when, it was when you had your neck surgery, it was right before that. Uh-huh. And I was going through, uh, some, some spinal issues that were causing tremendous, uh, nerve pain. And I was being a pussy and feeling sorry for myself and lying in bed going, Oh, look at me, you know, I can't do this. And then, you know, like you're here going, Hey, I just had like, uh, you know, uh, neck surgery a minute ago and I'm fucking sparring. No. Like, like, you know, I'm, I'm making fun, but it was so, I like, was back in the gym two days later. Right. And, and your, it was your writing and, and it wasn't just, it wasn't that you were going, Hey, look at me. It was like, don't fucking quit. Don't give up. Uh, it yeah. was, it was inspiring, but it, it actually got me out of bed. And that's when I reached out to you. Yeah. 
uh, you know, through private message, and 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 we connected since then. But let's do two things. One, because we're 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 teasing we're teasing people here. Uh, either uh, you can start with with the the surgery with that, or uh, with your your parents moving here. And and because we're the so we when we were talking, we were having lunch. By the way, uh, it's my birthday today. Thank you. Happy and birthday. Thank you. And Hans already bought me um, lunch, but. Uh, we were talking in a little bit of the, the podcast and I said, you yeah, know, no fear podcast and the theme is fear. And, you know, it was like, a, like a pause. And I go like everybody, it's the way I reframe it. The way, you know, when I talk to, if I talk to a pro fighter and I go, Hey, let's talk about fear is like, you know, look at my cauliflower ears, look at my busted nose. What do you mean fear? I'm going to go fight this guy. And I go, well, are you worried about losing the fight and maybe losing sponsorship? Oh yeah. Are you worried that, you know, maybe you can't pay for your, like, that's all fear. It's how we define it. And so, uh, the other side of, of, of Hans is, is that he's really a, a creative entrepreneur and, and, and is involved in many, many aspects of business. And so we started talking about fear of success and, and what drives us. And, and, uh, you had some really, really cool stories. So let's start there with your parents coming over and how that shaped the foundation that drives you today. Well, my parents came here. My dad came from Germany. My mom came from Holland in uh, 1960. And um, they immigrated here to the United States. And uh, my mom came to go to school. My dad came to work. And uh, he's a he was a master TIG welder. And he basically built really cool shit. And my mom went to school and became a flight attendant. But, uh, you know, you, you fast forward, you know... Um, to, you know, me having me and my, my sister and stuff like that. And, and, uh, what always drove me, like what always has been the underlying like effect of some of the stuff that I've done was I always, you know I mean? Like it, it was always, I don't want to say it was like a praise thing, but it was definitely, I was doing it in an attempt to make sure that I was getting the recognition or I was like, I was, I was, you know, like I was it was the competitive aspect because they're very competitive people too. You know, they, they came all the way here and for them, that was a big deal to, to just make that gigantic leap and, and do something majorly different, especially during that time. So, you know, like if I were to get a B in school or if I would like, you know, like I, I wouldn't do as well in a, in a surfing competition or something like, it's like, okay, eh, whatever. And it was just kind of passed over. So I just, it just drove me to the point where I was like, okay, I really need to like, that's the thing is I need to work hard so that, I could get these better grades, and ironically, it was never. I it was never about the grades for success. It was always for them. It was always like nice. I wanted to make sure that they were proud of me. Like it's that's the the buildup, and I still think that is a major function of why I do things. You know, is that I always have that like, well, I want to show you know that I could complete these tasks. And a lot of times, that people say you can't do, mm-hmm. you know, and it's and it's that extreme drive of, of being a competitive person. You know, and that's all rooted from them coming in and having that, that instilled in me at a very young You'd age. You mentioned your dad used to race. Yeah, my dad raced road bikes, he played soccer, you know, he coached my soccer team. And then when I left to go play baseball, he was very, very upset about right. that. Because that's not a European sport. Yeah, he didn't care right. about baseball. He was cool with me playing football, but like baseball was not right. something that he was into. He was like, why aren't you playing soccer? I, right. I've coached you my whole life. You're really good at this. Why did you stop? And I think that was that weird me kind of rebelling, going, I'm going to... Do my own thing. Yeah, I'm going to do my own thing. And then, you know, like, I, I look back and I'm like, oh, I should have just kept on doing it. You know, but, again, it was like, it shaped who I am. Right. You know, so it's, it's yeah, I mean, it's but it's but it's always been there. I mean, it's like, my, my fear is not getting on the field. My fear, is, my, my fear is not going out in the water or getting on a motorcycle. That's not it. My fear is, if I'm going to do it, I want to do it really good. Right. And if I can't do it really good, that puts me in a position where I'm like, shit, that scares me. Right. It's not the actual act. It's it's not being it. It's it's doing it incorrectly or making or me looking like not up to my own personal standards of doing it. That's right. why I mean and, and, and I've you know and a lot of the lessons and a lot of stuff I've been doing recently is that like for years I would never have put me like hitting pads or sparring or anything because I would just you know it's I'm very vulnerable. Right. You know what I mean? Like there's a million critics out there and that's the thing is that I purposely done it over and over. That's one of those things I've been doing and I've been active, an exercise I've been personally doing so that it's not to go, Oh, look at me. It's like, 
you know, I'm looking at myself and I'm actually like, I'm overcoming my own personal fear of like the, uh, you know, just the visibility of people seeing how I'm doing something. Right. Cause that's a scary thing. You know, it's, 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 you know, it's like people that don't want to talk in front of a bunch of, you know, like stand up, you know, and speaking in front of a group of people. That's a huge fear for people. It's not for me, you know, but my fear is if I'm up there and I look weird doing it, you know what I mean? Like, and I see myself and I'm like, oh, I shouldn't really like, I'm like, right. it's a weird shirt on, something weird, you know, that's, that's the weird thing. And that's, that's what drives me to, to keep going. It's, it's also interesting because, I mean, you could be uh, a dancer or you could be a painter yeah. showing stuff where people go, oh, I don't like, you know, how he painted the sunset or that's not a good plie. I can't believe I remember that word. Uh, it's a little embarrassing. Uh, not from my dancing. My, my, my sister used to dance. That's how I know. I wasn't a ballerina, anybody. So the, but you're Even in. if you were, that would be right, a deal. Right, right. <laughs> Uh, the uh, the the amazing thing is that you have you know positioned yourself uh, where you're you're best known. You do a bunch of things. You've been in several businesses, but in the actual combat sport community. Yeah, and that was like that was a fluke. I was never supposed to be in there. I mean, like that was me being from action sports, doing something that I've done my entire life, which is being involved in surfing, skateboarding, and motocross being ultra bored of it and like wandering down because a friend of mine told me about, you know, and I had trained a little bit. I had been doing some jujitsu, but it was never at that level. And I went down South and I met up with a uh, Dean Litzer and Jocko. And, right. And, and you started, just got your black belt a few months yeah, ago, just, right? December. Congrats, man. Yeah. So I got how many years? 17, 17. Yeah. So they're just giving out belts there. Yeah. Everyone has them. <laughs> I mean, you go down there, you'll get one tomorrow. Right. Yeah. Right. Around your neck yeah. and hang you outside. Yeah. Jocko is really liberal about giving belts. Right. Out. Yeah. Those are two badass. I've known Dean just superficially for years. We like bumpy, like we know who each other's, we know each other. We see each other in airports and just kind of nod, <laughs> but we don't know each other. We just, yeah. just kind of like, I know him, you know, and it's, uh, no, um, that's those those are two amazing guys to train under. Uh, the so tell us how if it was an accident. Where did it first start? The connection going from extreme the adrenaline sports to uh, connecting in the fight world. Well, I uh, okay. So I'm working at a footwear brand that was based out of San Diego, and I live up in North County. The footwear brand was in mid San Diego, which would be Claremont Mesa. And, um, the, at that time, the only place to go train was in downtown San Diego. There was no other gyms. And so, especially considering that like MMA was such at a weird infancy, even though it had been around, right. it was just outlawed for so long that no one knew. And it wasn't like there was this array of gyms that there is now. And so I went down there and I started just training with these guys. Right. And I was like, Oh shit. Like you want to talk about driving the competitive spirit, go down and work with Dean Litzer and Jocko and all the whole crew. And like, you're going to, you're going to want to, if you're competitive, you're going to want to go back every day, every hour and be there because there's a, you know, there's a game, I guess you want to say that you could play every single day with somebody, you know, on the mat or sparring or whatever. And that like just fueled my desire to learn and get better and like really like get involved. And, um, so, you know, and I didn't tell, these guys didn't really know how deep I was in action sports, which I was very deep mm. and, you know, I mean, doing my thing and skateboarding and, and everything I've done and, you know, like they didn't know my photography background and they, they didn't care. They right. just knew some guy was in there that was down a fucking train and get after it. And that's what I did. And I was a big body and I was athletic and it was, put, it was before I had a ton of injuries. So that's all I did. And I started competing with them. I mean, we did fights we did all this shit together and you know then it starts coming out and like hey well like you know we need somebody to do this i'm like i could do that i really need somebody i could do that you know and it just kept on growing and then i was like you know what i'm gonna do something that i've never done before and i'm gonna pitch it to my guys at the footwear brand i'm gonna, I'm gonna sponsor dean for a fight no one's done this in this industry like right. nobody in my industry in action sports had done that yet so i sponsored dean for a pride fight and it's like i mean and this is what's cool about shit like this is that like and i've been kind of releasing it now too is that you know, there's, it's documented, mm -hmm. you know? So like when I say this kind of shit, it's fucking real. Like I'm not right. just like woofing it up saying that like, Oh yeah, I was involved. And like, you can't really figure out where right. the fuck it was at. Like, yeah. So, you know, we put his, we put the logo on 
um, Dean Shorts, we had the Osiris logo on there and like we got some response and we're like, oh shit, you know, there's something there. People like, you know, there's people watching this, you know, outside of what we thought was like, you know, our group, like there's other people. And, and so that rotated and moved into, so the guys now that are coming in and training with us, and one of the guys was this kid named Diego Sanchez mm -hmm. and Diego was, you know, like he was on the ultimate fighter and he was doing some shit and same thing with Brandon Vera. And so Brandon was one of a really close training partner of mine. We trained almost every single day together. We had Diego, Brandon, and Dean. And I go, okay, I'm going to put this, sh I'm going to put a shirt on Brandon Vera. I'm going to put an Osiris shirt on Brandon Vera and see the response because he's fighting in the UFC. And he, he walked out with it and it went fucking crazy. Hmm. So we were getting phone calls the next day at the office like, holy shit, you guys are sponsored a fucking UFC fighter. Oh my God. And that rolled into like, whoa, there's a business here. Like, there's something here. So I sponsored Diego, and then I sponsored Rampage, and I was doing all these deals. Uh, Mayhem Miller, all my guys that I would train with, all my guys. Like So, so now I just mm. fused two worlds together that I was right. indirectly not ever thinking was going to happen, ever. And so my background with all of that is that, you know, like in action sports, I'm, I was a marketing guy. I mean, like I, I ran the, the teams, I ran the, the surf team, I ran the skate team, I ran the moto team, I oversaw everything. So I had my team, I had all everybody, you know, lined up that worked for me and I built all the ads, I shot all the photos. I did all these things that, that you know, in traditional action sports was like just the gateway of what we did. And so adding this new element that was kind of looked kind of weirdly in my eyes because I didn't know how all they would re react to it was just this like, mega explosion of exposure that no one thought was going to happen. And I'm kind of fast forwarding, jumping a little bit around, mm -hmm. but what ended up ultimately happening from that is I went and I started another business, which was a business called Throwdown. And Throwdown was my first MMA business that I, I did with a partner of mine that I used to train with at City Boxing. And we had both, we had fought together. We had did different shit. And he was, he, come from, he came from skateboarding too. And he was, a, he was building, um, you know, parks and shit. And he, he came to me and he actually had the idea. He's like, Hey, look, man, it was, I know that I could build the cages. I know how to, when I, when I say I could build it, he's, he was a, um, he was an architect. He goes, I know how to build, I could design these cages. And, um, he goes, I know that you can market them. And I was like, I can, I know what to do here. And I know we could build an apparel brand out of this too. So what I, I ultimately did, and this is a very, open story that I tell everybody is I go, you know what I'm going to fucking do? I'm going to take the fucking independent truck model, which is, you know, they've made making skateboard trucks for years. You know, the Indy Iron Cross is one of the most like well-known logos in the, in the, in the business. And I go, I'm going to take that fucking model. I'm going to apply it straight to, um, this cage model we're going to do. I go, I'm going to take the athletes that I already know, Chuck Liddell, Randy Couture, Dean, you know, Rampage, all these guys I've been working with training with for the last, whatever, since I've been doing it. Cause at this point I'd build up this nice network and I'm going to put them all on it and it exploded, mm -hmm. you know? So that was my first MMA business. And I was doing that concurrent with a footwear business. And then I eventually just took a break from footwear and just went straight up MMA. And this was 12 years ago. And, um, then of course, like all great things happen in business. My partner and I had the fucking ultimate blow up. We hate each other and we sued each other. And nice. I left the company and I started my brand triumph. Tell us about Triumph. So Triumph was a it was never supposed to be the apparel equipment company. It was, or it is now currently. Um, it was a agency in all the original stuff that I put out. Any of the ads, all the stuff that it is, it's a visual visual propaganda agency. I was working with the athletes. I was working with Rampage. I was working with these fighters to, to help them build their brands. Currently, like I do now, it's the same shit. It's everything I've always been doing. I always have been working with athletes to build their personal brands. I build athletes' brands. So when I have, like on my tagline on Instagram, it says, mm -hmm. I influence influencers, because I do. I'm the one who fucking talks to these guys and say, hey, you gotta do this shit, or you gotta do that shit. And they listen to me because they've been with me for a long time, and I built them. And so with Rampage, I had, and there's documentation of this too, I had built his shorts for him, and there was a Triumph logo on there, and there was a Throwdown logo on there. The Triumph logo, was just my branding that I was like, I didn't, you know, I mean, outside of me doing my, you know, like I knew maybe it'd become a brand, but it was really just this thing that I was mm -hmm. going to do to work with the athletes. Rampage goes and knocks out Chuck in the first round. 
of you know the UFC and and um, he wins the heavy or the light heavyweight championship and immediately my phone starts blowing up from all my old connections that said hey that logo that's on the right leg what's up with that do you have any t-shirts because like we were getting hit up so I started the brand and so that now is 11 years 12 years ago Amazing. still going but and now you're 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 you've got equipment you know bags pads yes gloves, we have everything. I mean, like it's everything. a full blown I mean it's everything that I didn't think it was going to be it is now so right. I mean it's it's everything from headgears to shin guards you know every single piece of equipment you can and, possibly and, have and, and one of the things I love uh, most about you we've had like offline talks about our about our passion for for uh, integrity and quality is you're still very hands on with everything. I design everything. You're, you're, you do, you do, the, you're still doing the photo shoots. You're still organizing stuff. You're like, it's a blessing and a curse. Of course. You know what I mean? I mean, it's one of those things that I've tried so many times to hand it over on certain things. Of course. I mean, that like that, that just, I just, there's a lot of stuff. There's just, I just physically can't do, but um, the stuff that I feel are the important aspects of the brand I, I've tried to hand it over. I've tried to get, I mean, and w- it just comes back around to me and I have to do it. And it's just, it's the DNA of the brand. And I think that people look at it a certain way and like, I can never fully explain how to do it to somebody else mm-hmm. rather than just do it myself. And so a lot of the time I'm just like, I got to design it or I got to shoot it or I got to lay it out. And I still do. That's your vision. And, and I it, guess, I mean, it's just, it's just, it's just what the company has to be. And I'll, I'll sacrifice, I'll sacrifice having to do it myself than having put out some shit that isn't anywhere up to par with, I think, you right. know, hundred percent. What's the, uh, when did monster start and, and seven years ago, it was very weird rare thing that happens you know in the world of business and just life is that uh, like one of my really close friends Cody Dresser who is the um, who oversees everything action sports um, anything that doesn't have a motor it's his he's built a juggernaut I mean like the, the whole brand is you know is this you know major creation because Cody has you know this really great vision on, on knowing how to do this right and again, like he's, I mean, to the point where he knew and he had, tra- Cody had trained with me. Cody was a pro snowboarder. He, Cody and I worked together actually at Osiris. He was, so he was doing the snow team years ago and he was a pro snowboarder. I worked with him then and then he moved on and worked and ran the team and then went and did some other things and then came to Monster. And then, you know, we hooked up and started just kind of like loosely talking about this idea. And he's like, yeah, I think we should do this. And, and he gave me the keys and we built this program from scratch, never been done, never been thought about. I mean, it was a very, I mean, like there was a lot of hurdles for many years to get it to where it's at right now. It just didn't happen. And, you know, it was numerous, you know, um, attempts to just getting people to understand and believe. And then again, just like Brandon Bear putting the shirt on, walking out, it clicked. And when it clicked, it clicked really hard. So now, you know, we're, we're, the, you know, the title sponsor of the UFC, Bellator, working on a new partnership with a, a major kickboxing company. Um, and then we've got the best athletes in the world from Conor McGregor to Rampage to every single champion in the UFC, champions in Bellator. I mean, it's a major, major component of the monster brand. And, you know, I have to work with all these guys, but it's it's amazing, you know. How many, how many years, or how many years, how many days a year on the road are you? Is that even a sentence? Like, I mean, it's, it's, I mean, it's like, I mean, I'm, I'm on the road a lot. Like I usually leave on a Wednesday or a Thursday and I come back on a Sunday based upon events. But you know, in between, like, this is the crazy thing is that we still have to, and this is what you're asking before is that, um, I'm the one who shoots the photos. Like I've got Courtney and I, Courtney is, is, um, my, he, he is the only guy I trust to shoot with me. He's one of the only people in the world that I'm like, yeah. Like Courtney is, is I could, he could handle what we need. He, he's, he's, he's the road dog that's going to go on the trips and he's the road dog that I know that if I send him out to an event or I send him out to get a shoot done, he's going to get it fucking done and he shoots amazing. So he's the other guy that helps me do all this stuff. But, um, you know, outside of the events, we have to produce the marketing material. So we have to produce 
you know, the photography. We got to produce, you know, the back end stuff for the website. We have to do all this stuff. It doesn't just magically happen. Right. And we don't have, it's just us. I mean, there's no major team behind this doing it. And that's kind of how Monster runs. I mean, like, in all the aspects of everything they do. And that's what makes the brand great. I think that's, and in some parts, you're just like, dude, this is fucking insane. But you, it comes off, you know, like, wow, they've got some, like, whoever's doing it knows what the fuck they're doing. Right. Everywhere from NASCAR to MMA to esports, like everything we do is the shit because everybody in those departments are the shit. Right. And that's a, that's like a true testament to the brand of, of understanding how to get the right people in the right, you know, environment to make it work. It's, it's amazing because the, if it was the conventional way corporations work, you'd be bottlenecked. Yeah. Because you'd be in fucking meetings all day and you'd have three people that would need to sign off on some budget shit. Yes. And right now you can have a vision and go make it happen yes. because you're the team. Yeah. That's how it exactly works. That's and it. and but again, I think that that's just the evolution of how businesses nowadays mm-hmm. that have, have made some serious moves. I mean, like if you look at some of the newer businesses and the new business models, there's a reason for that. Some of the stagnant businesses, some of the businesses potentially Gibson. Mm-hmm. You know, right. have have been a part of these molds that like, you know, you go through your normal hiring process and you have some, you have some HR person or somebody that thinks they're qualified mm-hmm. to go and make these decisions rather than, you know, like setting up these real functional teams that can actually build it. Like, you know, like having these internal, you know, power teams basically that build out major, you know, leverage points of, uh, of, that, that was me. Oh, of uh, of the of the brand, you know. But I mean, it's for me. It's like this is day in and day out, every single day. And you dig it, the pace. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't have it any other way. It's crazy. At the uh, your it just this just popped in my head. Uh, it's a picture you've um, you posted a couple of times. The uh, sunset shot in Oceanside. Oh, yeah. I don't know why it popped in my head. Uh, how long you've been into photography, and and uh, are you asking me? Yeah. Oh, okay. How how long have you been like? Has that been a passion? Nineteen ninety three. It's not a passion though. It's just it's a tool for your work. Uh, yeah, it's weird because people trip out on what it says. Is that like you know I started doing it as a necessity. Like I started right. do- shooting photography because it was. It's a, like a rifle for a soldier. You, absolutely. Yeah, you need it. Yeah, yeah, and that's just it. That's a pretty good analogy. Is that like there's there's tools that you need you need to utilize if you want to be in the game that I'm in. Right. Right. And, um, you know, I mean, I don't want to say that I'm a complete like polymath or anything like that, but I mean, I have to like, I have to be able to do multiple functions. And if I can't train myself to do it right. And I want, so, and so that's the thing is that, so like I'll go outside of the box too. like, okay, I've shot portraits forever. Right. And I've shot, you know, um, you know, product shots or whatever it may be. And so when I started doing like the landscape stuff, that was really just because I was getting over my normal photography and I had to keep myself sharp. And so I started doing that. And then once I started doing that, like on a, like a real small, like minuscule level, I, then the competitive nature came out. I'm like, okay, let's, let me see who the best in the game are. Peter Lick, like all these guys right, I'm looking right. at, I'm like, like, who are these guys? And, and that's, I start, that's, that's kind of what that, yeah, that reminds me of, you know? So I look at these guys and I start, I start seeing their shit and I'm like, fuck, I could do that. You know what I mean? <laughs> and I'm like, I could easily do that. There's no way, you know what I mean? It's like, it's like when you get in and like, and, and I, like, there are limits. Like you could get on a motorcycle and you go, I could go a hundred miles an hour on a motorcycle. Yeah, sure. But could you go 60 miles an hour and hit a triple? Mm. You know what I mean? Like those are the things you have to learn. Like anyone could go straight fast, but who could go, <laughs> who could hit a jump successfully, clear it and land on the other side and keep going. So with the photography, it's like anybody could point a camera and shoot. I mean, the fucking thing I hear every single day is what kind, what kind of camera do you use to get those shots? You know? And I'm <laughs> like, I mean, that's just not it. Like that's the thing is that your first mistake is, is that you didn't even take the time to understand how the science of the camera works. Right. You know, and it's the science of everything. Like there's, there's a, there's an equation for everything that makes things work. Right. And when, when you talk to people and, and they just think that there's this quick line of a perfect camera is going to give you this perfect shot and right. you could be a fucking professional tomorrow. That's such bullshit to me. That's, that's uh deep and profound because 
you you get that all the time even my business someone will you know call me up and they go hey i want to i want to do your trainer course i want to do what you do and i'm like like dude i've been doing this for going on 40 years and i'm still waking up at three in the morning writing down ideas for drills and rewriting shit and trying to make it better um it's it's not an overnight thing it's not and and it's it's i love the way you you phrase there's an equation for everything and let's talk about your take philosophically on that equation of work ethic and integrity because that's like that's huge like you said you can go fast and straight that's not a big deal uh and you could buy the best camera and maybe get a good picture because the camera but only take you so far this generation like right now is this quick fix entitled generation and they don't understand work ethic. And this comes back to maybe a little full circle with, with your upbringing because, you know, your parents coming from Europe, especially uh, Holland and, and Germany, like there's a, there's a work ethic for most Europeans of that era. Um, incidentally, they came over ironically, 1960, the year I was born. Uh, so 57 years ago, 58 years ago, mm-hmm. but, um, talk to me a little bit about, God, that's a long time. Man. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> thanks, dude. Thanks. Ah! Me, well done. Uh, someone bring me a cane, please. <laughs> I have to go to the bathroom. Um, the, uh, uh, work ethic and, and who you are when no one's looking, right? Yeah. I mean, it just has to be, it's applicable to everything and everything you do in life. I mean, it's everything like you can't pretend to have like a strong work ethic you just can't right right so i mean ironically you know you 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 get a lot of people that want to get these like instant you know gratification jumps in business or whatever it may be and like look i mean there's it's going to happen some people made a home run but they're not going to hit it twice Mm. you know you know it's the guy that's out there that's consistently you know hitting the ball over and over and over and over and over and it becomes muscle memory and then it becomes you know hand eye coordination and then it becomes you know understanding the exact you know position and power he needs to be swinging at to get it right and you can't do that unless you work at it you just can't and so for me like daily and just in general I have to there are things I mean that run through my head and there are things that I want to accomplish and I have to put myself in a position where you know, I'm willing to sacrifice and I'm willing to get up super early and go to bed super late so that I could get them done. And I have to fit in everything in between, you know, personal life, you know, um, health and, and, and wellness by working out and balancing this trade of, of getting the job done. You stay, I mean, like I always, I live by that, that, that fucking Brad Pitt quote in um in snatch when um you know he goes and fights the the dude for the first time and um after they sold him the the caravan the wheels fall off i don't know if you remember this but he goes you know he's he's about to like throw in the towel and he's like oh man you're sick man you gotta stop doing this and he goes he's about to walk away and brad pitt goes you're gonna stay till the job's done and that's just it Mm -hmm. like you stay till the fucking job is done and whenever that whenever or wherever that may be you just stay till the job is done you don't fucking leave you stay And you wait it out, you know, and like, I mean, like a lot of my analogies and a lot of the stuff that I've always thought about, I mean, I'm very, very, you know, um, I look at a lot of military stuff and I look at a lot of stuff, you know, past and present, you know, conflicts and wars and just, you know, just strategy because it is applicable to people in in modern life and just everything you're doing, you know, it's like, you can't just leave, like get up and leave if you're in a firefight, right? You stay till the job is done because otherwise you're going to get killed. You know, and I'm not saying that like... Look, any of the things I'm doing are going to lead me to get killed, but what they're going to do is they're going to start notching away at the goals and the things that will eventually kill my inner spirit. Right. And that's the big thing is that like, I mean, once I start putting myself in that position where I'm going to get to the point where I'm like, I just don't want to do this. I'm just over it. I'm just bummed. I just want to like lay on the couch and do nothing. What the fuck is, it's not worth living for me. You know, like I want to keep going and I want to keep like that drive going and I want to keep those, you know, that fire stoked and just keep moving. So, you know, the work ethic is not thinking that it's work. First of all, mm-hmm. I just don't. Right. I look at it as it's just like this, like this, like a master, 
chess game that I'm a part of that like I'm just continuously making moves over and over and over and like the other opponent is just life and life's going to send you in different directions and it's going to put it's going to put you in you know different positions but you have to like you have to like calculate and think about the moves you make and so if that's going to take me waking up early and like sitting there and like I'm sitting there editing photos or I'm sitting there thinking about how I'm going to do you know this major you know event we're going to be doing in in ireland with conor mcgregor at the end of june like how we pull this off right how do i get conor to do this how, i mean all these different things i'm thinking about like okay this is i'm gonna approach it this way i'm gonna approach conor this way i'm gonna approach this management this way i'm gonna approach monster this way i mean like all these different things i gotta keep going until that job is done and i won't stop thinking about it until we physically are leaving ireland and it's done and then i'm on to the next thing right or i may be even thinking about the next thing as we're doing the conor thing you know, and it just keeps going and it never ends, you know, and, but I don't want it to. Right. I don't think I'll ever want it to until I'm done. When I'm saying I'm done, like I'm physically fucking in the ground somewhere, <laughs> you know, but, uh, you know, and I kind of try to instill that in my kids too. And it's just one of those things that like, we have this whole outlook of life and it's just, it's just getting twisted and people are looking at things completely too much, like in, in a way that it's all about them. And it's all about like, you know, like what they're going to get out of it or when it's going to be done for them or like how, like how it benefits them, you know? And it's just, you can't do it that way. You know I mean? This is, this is a, this is a, a bigger thing than just you or me. It's right. all of us, you know? The, you, you said something a while ago, uh, about, uh, when we were talking about photography and you said you could, you looked at some of the best out there and went, I could do that. Mm -hmm. And that type of self-confidence is is unique and i think uh you know i mean this show is about you so i don't want to talk about me but but i felt like growing up if i wanted to do something i never went oh i probably can't do that i was like i want to do that i want to meet that person i'm going to go there i'm going to you know uh do you have you ever thought about where that confidence comes from or you just go after it and you see the strategy un unfolding? Um, it's just, I mean, again, like, I mean, it's funny you said, I want to meet that person. That's, that's a very, that's a funny one you just mentioned because it's a, it's something that has happened multiple times in my life and it's never about what me wanting to meet the people. And that's just it. That's the game again. It's like, my wife will be like, this is a true story and this has happened on multiple occasions. And, um, Dave Bautista is one of them. Nick Swartzen is one of them. And so I'll just, I'll start with Nick Swartzen. Nick Swartzen, who is a very good friend of mine now, but before I didn't know who Nick was. And, right. and my, my wife was super into Reno 911 and just Nick in general and some of the stuff he was doing. And, and it's, he would get brought up. Like it'd be, you know, one of those things that like, oh, Nick rules. And like, Nick, he's so funny, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, <laughs> just looking like, who the fuck is this guy? Right. You know? And then, and I'm like, and then next thing you know, she, I'm like, hey, I'm going to go eat with Swartz. And she's like, what the fuck? Right. And, I'm like, and, it, and it was, that's just the competitive thing. So, so Nick and I meet, we, we, you know, like I, 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 you know, I'm like, okay, like we've got, you know, different friends or whatever. And just kind of like works out. Yes. Yeah. And it's like, we, and, and I'm like, how can I work? With, like, how, how does this work out? And, and by life and just like how things end up working out, we become friends because people are cool and become friends. Right. Right. And that's just it. And it's the same thing with like Dave Bautista, for instance, right? It was one of those things that when the first, uh, and I, cause I didn't follow his, his, his wrestling stuff, but when the first guardians came out, my kids were in a guardians of the galaxy. Right. And they're like, he's the coolest fucking character. And I'm just like, <laughs> like there we go. Right? Yeah. So I want to fucking impress my kids now. Right. And right. I'm like, eh, I'll work with Dave. I'll figure it out. And I did. And, you know, I mean, I've done multiple projects with him and we're really good friends now. And it just, again, you're going to, I mean, I do believe this is that, you know, if you're a good person and you genuinely connect with people, you're going to become friends with them for real. Mm -hmm. And it's not going to be forced and it's not going to be one of these weird things. And that just happens. And like, I've, I, you know, a lot of people always go, oh, man, you're so fucking lucky. You get to hang out with these guys. I'm like, I'm fucking hanging out with them. They're hanging with me. Right. Like, like, what do you mean? You think that I'm just like chasing these dudes or no, like this is, there's levels to this shit. And this is one of those levels where, right. where you like, 
if you want to be a part of the game, you need to show what you're there. So maybe I'm not the actor, you know, maybe I'm not the, you know, um, the, the, the huge MMA fighter per se, but guess what? I'm the guy that does this alongside them. Right. Mm -hmm. So I'm the guy that could, is, is the one that is helping these guys build these careers. I'm helping these guys do that stuff. And so whether you're the accountant that does it, Mm -hmm. whether you're the guy that's building their websites that does it, or whether you're me, just a brand builder in general that shoots photos that can advise these guys, hey, do this, don't do this. Like I could, I could work you into this kind of stuff. That's how it works. And that's where the trust comes from. You know, the secondary to that is that if you do participate in the stuff they do, like if you, you know, like you train or whatever, that just adds to the element, you know, and that's what adds to the respect. And I do both, you know, so there's a genuine, you know, respect level that happens when, when you're around people like that. And that's just it is that when you want to fake it, it's going to get sniffed out. Mm -hmm. If you want it to be real, you got to take your time and you got to, you got to let those, you got to get those, let those relationships, you know, actually come to fruition. You got to plant that seed and watch it grow. The, uh, it, it's, it's interesting cause and you alluded to it earlier in this, this generation where people just want shit like instant gratification. And, uh, it's, it's an ir- it's a real irony to and, and the cliche for that reason that shit takes time and here I am you know again my birthday 58 and I'm going like the stuff that I know that I've realized in the last couple of years uh, like I regularly say to myself why couldn't I have understood this in my 20s or 30s but you and that's you could, because you couldn't because you couldn't and, and I, that's and just it. That, is that yeah. is that is that you know? It's it takes that long. Yeah, but what we do have now is that we've got access to information at the drop of a hat. And so what I could become again? Okay, so I'll put it this way: is that when I would look at Peter Look's photos, right? When I say I want to shoot landscape architect or whatever landscape photography, and I, I want to do something different, and I want to change it up, and I want to go and figure out how to how to make my images look somewhat like you know, a, a reputable name in the sport, right? Not sport. In the okay. game. But before, and this has happened to me before too, is I would have to go march my way down to a gallery or march my way down to somewhere or pick up, go to the bookstore, which back we used right. to do. No one does that anymore. Right, but right. you go to the bookstore and you pick up a book and you look at it and you buy it, whatever, and you just look at it. And you just have access to that one piece of information. Now, you can fucking get on Google and look at whatever you want immediately. Right. right. So what I can do or whatever I want to do, if I want to learn something, is I do what I used to do and what we should all be doing is I educate myself. Mm-hmm. And I'm not just educating myself by one piece of information. I'm going to go and flank in different ways and go, okay, this, 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 this. And I'm going to put it all together and go, this is how I think in my mind it would work best for me. And I'm going to try it out. And if it doesn't work out, I'm going to replace it with one of the other things I have and I'll keep going. You know, I mean, it's just like playing an instrument, you know, like there's a million ways you can play that guitar, but you know, there's going to be like a couple ways for you that you're going to feel comfortable, especially if you want to learn a song or if you want to like figure out how to like, you know, move around the neck in a certain way that, you know, you just, you just works for you. So in this age, I think that there's, there's this massive, like, like benefit of being able to get this information and all this education at the, I mean, like you, t- I mean, you really don't have to go to school. Mm-hmm. You don't like if I would had, all the, if I had all this stuff back when I was in college and high school and, and I, I'd be especially considering I know how to navigate a computer better than most people, mm-hmm. you know? And like, I used to write code. That's another thing. You have no oh idea. Like, like I was a code writer for a long time. I, like, well, I mean, look, I mean, Hey, look, this, this is my ADD caving right now. Right. I have to say this because this is something that I've never told you about. And I okay. love this story. Go for is it. that in the late 90s, I figured out, because this is how I work, by the way, is that I will go and I'll be like, okay, I don't know this skill and I got to have somebody do it. Right. This is something like I know and nothing. I don't know how to build a website. 1998 working for um, a company, Danny Way's company, XYZ, who lives down the street. Best skateboard in the world. Nice. Right there. It's right there. Best skateboarder in the world. I worked for his company. We need a new website, right? Back then it was costing 20 grand for some right. obscene Ridiculous. amount to build a website. I go and I we start working on this stuff and I start watching them like, what are you doing? And I'm doing this again. I'm like, uh, like, what are you writing? Oh, 
this is the code for the back end. You know, like you have to write the, the, the HTML and get it up. I'm like, where do you get that from? You know, it's pretty easy. If you just, you know, like these, these are guys that like are like kind of like guys back then are just like open information. There's a couple books, you read it. So it's just a language. That's all it is. It's like learning a language. Yeah. So if I learn this language, I could write and build and I could place my stuff online and it'll go up immediately. And I, I mean, so I could put the designs because I, I was building the framework out. I would do the designs, you know, so, but you got to get it up. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's super easy. As long as you learn, learn the language. I'm like, but no one ever wants to take the time to learn language. I'm like, well, fuck that. And I go, how much, how much is this thing costing? And I'm like, like oh, it's going to be this. I'm like, just for that? Okay. A year later, I'm like, anybody need a website? Come over to me. And I was making wow. money hand over fist building sites for people. And it was super easy. I that in because I was still out of my other thing. I was just like, I'd build two, three sites. Like I'd do, and the people I would pick out were like, um, I did one for, uh, again, Danny Way's, um, his doctor that was would do his surgeries and, and they, I mean it was just like here you go here's cash because right. everybody wanted it right. and I do like one or two here and there and I like, make some extra money and it was that easy to be able to make extra money if you took the time to learn how to do something different and learn the trade and build it and I learned it and, and did it it was a lot more consuming at that time because actually I had to get physical books now I think about it because right. it wasn't like so available on the web but nowadays you could just go online do some research figure it out and if you take the time and you actually put some effort into it, you can do it. I really believe that there's going to be, I don't know what, how, what and how higher education will play out in the upcoming years. I just don't know. Especially with, uh, you know, you're, tr you're tracking all the politics and the bullshit going yeah. on in the last couple of years. I For mean, sure. The, my, um, uh, my two daughters, we, we were very, very assertive about not going to school. You'll go if you really want to. Explain why you want to, but like the the real educations out there, not in not in some nothing. School. Nothing. I I mean, I went to school. I went to San Diego State, and it was completely by default. But at the same time, I'm glad I did it because I wouldn't have had this gigantic hefty bill from Pepperdine that mm -hmm. my when I got, whole other story. But I got accepted to Pepperdine. And my parents looked at the. Uh, how much it was going to cost? And he basically told me, beat it. Like, you're going to go to state. Like, we're not paying that. And right. it was probably one of the best things that's ever happened to me. But um, it, it was one of those things that, like, when I was I'm going to school, I'm like, what am I really learning here, you know? Right. And except for, actually, honestly, as I look back at it, what the fuck was I really learning there? Like, I didn't learn anything. I mean, I went to school. I mean, like, I think maybe, again, maybe that may play. Like, and I think that maybe for some people, they need that. They need to have that structure to go to school, go to class. And like be there and have these assignments and stuff done. And I do see that in my work environment, the college ed educated um, people, the ones that are college educated, they're, they're they get their like when we need to get things done, they get it done, mm. right? Like so, I'm gonna I'll, I'll get the reports about whatever I need, it'll be done. But that doesn't mean they're done right, right? You know what I mean? And so that's you know I mean from from a educational standpoint. I don't know where it goes. I mean, like I know that I could get more information and I can learn things at a rapid rate online by researching mm -hmm. people or people that I think that are going to give me the answers I need to do what I need to get to do done to do what I need to do to get it done. And I'm not going to get all these weird, like personal biases or personal things that come through on it, you know, cause it's just, it's a straight, they don't know who I am. I mean, it's just straight right, right. education. No, it's, it's, it's amazing the access that we have online now, but, uh, the, uh, the, sc the school systems in general, and I know there's, there's are a lot of good teachers out there and good schools out there, but in general, it's, it's p so politically corrupt, uh, with, with all the shit going on with, uh, you know, you saw the, you know, the stuff after, after the shootings and last year with the elections and the, you know they got uh, was a couple of universities just uh, uh, erected these uh, places you can go cry if you're upset and I don't know if you heard about that shit. No, what are they crying but about? Just I don't know. <laughs> you know the snowflake bullshit. But what the fuck are they really crying about? I have no fucking idea. Um, See that bothers me. Right. It bothers me just as a working individual and as a person that like, and I'm not trying to be a hard ass about this either. But like, I mean, we can't become so fucking soft right. that like that we're going to give up you know we can't give up like there's no like you know and, and you don't have to be like this 
ironclad, you know, old school, like, tough guy about it. But at the same time, like, you got to move on. Right. You know, like, I mean, when I, I mean, that's just kind of the thing is that, like, I've had a lot of injuries in my life. And the only thing that I could think about. A cry closet. Sorry for interrupting. Injuries in your life. They should fucking put people in there and not let them out. Right. Just fucking keep them in there. <laughs> Cry yourself to fucking sleep, bro. Because I don't, I don't right. want to meet no anybody ever that goes into a cry closet. And I'm not trying to be... I, again, I'm not trying to be insensitive or anything like that. But at the same time, like... Well, what's the message you send to everybody? If, like, hey, if, if, if you're having trouble, you know, at school today, you can go cry. Like, it's, <laughs> instead of get to fucking work. Look, there's nothing wrong with crying there's something wrong with using it as an excuse Mm -hmm. right so people cry they're gonna cry it's emotion it's it's something it's a feeling but to use it as an excuse like oh my god I'm crying I can't go to the cry closet well you're excused (laughs) because you're in the cry closet right but that's probably what it is it's a weird like there's probably some weird like underlying thing that if you were in the cry closet you didn't have to do something you know what I mean like, right no it's 100% that you know and it's, that's just it is that that's just it it's just another excuse for people not to do shit and that's what's fucking killing me right now is that I, I, de- I deal with so many people like that and I deal with people that are just trying to make up excuses on why shit can't get done and why they need to be they deserve to be somewhere else or what, all these different fucking things man and a lot of times you know it bugs me or whatever it put me in a weird situation where I'm like wow well, how does this affect me and then most of the time I go, I'll get past that shit and go, fuck that. This person's not going to succeed by doing what they did. Again, this is where I rev it up and I turn it back around and go, I will fucking outwork them. Right. You know, so, so how you're going to utilize that against me or where do you think? Like, you know, cause I mean, everyone's going to talk shit and everyone's going to try to get at you. That's just what it is, you know, but you know, like how, how do you come above and how do you push forward? I mean, like, and that's just it is being resilient. I mean, like, that's the one thing that I could say that. You know, especially in this day and age that like most people just don't appreciate nearly as much as the resiliency of like of hard ass people. And I do believe that, you know, that's the one thing that fucking Donald Trump, you can never take away from Donald Trump. That motherfucker is resilient, man. Like he just goes. And, you know, you have to give that credit. You got to look at it for what it really is, you know, and, 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 and stop the petty bullshit. You just got to stop it. Stop fucking stop feeling sorry for yourself. Yeah. Stop feeling sorry for everybody else. Stop feeling sorry for the reasons why you can't and start thinking about the reasons why you can. You know what I mean? Dude, like that's the reason. Okay, look, one of the main underlying reasons is why, of, of one of the reasons why I fucking train as hard as I do and I was like, I am unwilling to fucking quit is because when I was out, okay, so I went through two fun spinal fusions, not to mention my fucking broke my femur, torn AC, I mean like all these other ones, but the fusions were different just because... You know, it's when you mentally realize that there is a possibility, potentially, you could be paralyzed or whatever it may be. Because, I mean, this is a serious injury. And I didn't have fusions by, by you know, oh, by choice. I want to have a fusion. Like, I get that. I really get, this is a weird thing I do get. And I don't know. And, like, I'm hoping that I'm not going to offend anybody, anyone out there. But whatever. At the same time, I don't give a fuck. So, well, there is whatever. a cry closet if they have Yeah, to. they go in the yeah. fucking cry closet. I'll fucking kick their ass right in there. But listen, is that there are different levels of back injuries, right? You have a back injury, it hurts. I don't know what it is and I'm not going to comment on it. But I will say this, is that it, it gets me every so often because my back injuries were both of them were majorly traumatic and it wasn't like this like pinched nerve or ongoing thing that like, I'm thinking about surgery or maybe I'm going to Because I didn't have that option. Right. My fucking arm was stuck up against my chin. I'm losing my pectoral muscle. I'm losing my tricep. I couldn't move my hand. It was... Right. It was so fucking bad that I didn't sleep for two weeks and I had honestly, and I wasn't contempl- contemplating this at all, but it did run through my head why people would think that mm-hmm. is that like, if you had to live like that, fuck that. Right. Like, like give me the exit, you know, because, because that's no life to live, man. Like that's gnarly. Like it was, it was not even just a pain. It was just a, like this, this insane, like just problem with my nerves and just everything because it got blown out i broke my neck my c5 c7 gone there was nothing there it wasn't like a herniatus it wasn't like a bulging it was nothing there it was just fucking you know shit was just smashed in like completely annihilating my nerves and when they pulled it out it just soup fell out wow on two of them on my lower back and my neck same shit happened 
which is the odds on that are insane, you know? And so, you know, um, and I go and I, I get my necks all fucked up and I'm, I'm at the doctor's and he's like, you got to go in immediately. Like, you're not going to, this is bad. Like, you got to go. And we were shooting the Conor McGregor commercial because he was fighting that month. And I go, I got to wait a week. <laughs> I go, he goes, what do you mean you got to wait a week? He goes like, he goes, dude, like, he was like, you could physically do it. You could wait a week. Like, that's fine. He goes, but it's going to fucking, this is going to be bad. You're going to die. Dude. I mean, it's going to hurt. I'm like, nope. I got to fucking shoot this commercial. And I go, this is, the, this is one of the biggest commercials ever for the brand. And it's huge for Connor. And for me, it's a big fucking deal. And I fucking gutted it out. And I dealt with the pain for an entire fucking week. You know, and um, it was gnarly. And I mean, I got sick. It was crazy, you know. I mean, crazy shit, but... You know, it's like, I'm not going to leave the fucking troops on the fucking front line by themselves. And I had to go. And I did. And so all my guys that were out there, every single one of them saw me suffer, including Connor. You know, and, and he was pissed I was out there. He was pissed. Like, what the fuck are you doing here, dude? Like, you need to go get fucking surgery. Stop fucking around. Connor McGregor's telling me this. Right. Like, pulling me aside. Like, Connor's like, dude, you're shooting with one arm. Your other arm's dangling right now, basically. He's like, you don't need to be here, dude. And I go, I got to be here. I don't, I gotta get, this has to be right. And we put, we put out the commercial, it was the best thing we ever did. Four million fucking, like, views, like, with the first day. Mm-hmm. I went and got surgery, and I, did, I flew back right after, then we wrapped the commercial, flew right into surgery. Wow. And I got my surgery. So the reason why, though, that I was so eager to go and get back to training and doing all that shit is because the first fu- fusion, I didn't know how it was going to play out. And I didn't know how long it took me longer, like, to, like, get my shit together and go, because I just wanted to work out and go. And I had some, like, doctors, you know, like, that were saying... You know, um, oh, I don't know, you know, like, I don't, and, and they're going off of just like, I guess, normal people. And I don't want to say I'm like a completely unknown person, but I do believe that I'm a little bit different mm-hmm. and, um, not special, but just mm-hmm. different. Mm-hmm. And, and so I just said, okay. So I talked to my doctor. I'm like, how long physically, physically, not mentally. Like, I'm not talking about the pain. I go, I'll deal with the fucking pain. Like, but like structurally I'm bolted together. You got bolts in me. You got cages in me. I got cadaver parts. And he goes, well, you can go and you could start walking and you could start doing super lightweight based around the pain. I go, I'm not fucking worried about the pain. I'm just worried about like, I'm going to fuck myself up internally. He goes, no, you're fine. And so we, we guided it and I recovered dramatically fast because I just pushed through it. You know, it mean, hurt. Of course it fucking hurt. Right. But if it wasn't going to hurt, it wouldn't be easy. You know what I mean? Like this is the thing is that like, that's the thing is that everything you do in life, it's gonna if it doesn't hurt and it doesn't if it's not hard, then it's not worth doing. That's my opinion. If it's too easy, something's wrong. Something's wrong. Yeah. That's, you know? that's heavy, man. And two days after your neck surgery you were in the gym. Yeah, I got photos of it. Yeah. No, I remember yeah. and that's when that was right around when I kind of discovered you on Instagram and and, and it was watching your rehab yeah. and you posting about it made me you know, say, hey, get the fuck out of bed, man, and start moving. Yeah. It's, uh, that was, uh, that was the kind of like, you helped push me vicariously. It was fucking awesome. That's I when I reached, well, that's when I reached out. That's to my, you. that was my goal. I mean, like, I, I wanted to, you know, I mean, the, the first time around, you know, I fought three times in one year. Mm. I fought three times after my lower back fusion because I wanted to show you can do it. Second time around, I wanted to show that you could get back in it quick. And it's sad that I had to say a second time around because it did happen twice. Mm. But, I don't dwell on it. I don't use it for a benefit. I mean, it's not fucking like, I mean, it's not like, like it's this cool thing that happened to me at all. Right. It's like nobody wants to go through that. Right. You know what I mean? My neck is fused. I've got a fucking, looks like somebody stabbed me in the neck. You know, weirdly everyone goes, did you ever thyroid? Dick? <laughs> right. No, man. man fucking, my my no. neck is fused. I got a raspy ass voice from it now too because I hit my vocal cords, you know, and my lower back's fused. I got a big ass tube. Shoot, do you ever see my scars back here? No. Oh, yeah. We didn't uh, talk about my tattoo, by the, though. By the way, Hans is getting undressed right now. Look at that. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. Two major Wolverine scars. This tattoo didn't exist seven months ago. You didn't right. Talk, I, didn't I know. That's on, that's on that's on Instagram, all that. Yeah, I got stab infection. Yeah. Remember, I remember you telling that. me that. CBD cream. Crazy. No, I mean, that's the thing. You know, like, it's again, I'm not mad at how it happened. Hopefully I don't have to have another spinal fusion. Right. Um, I'm not mad about how it happened, but yeah, I mean, like that's another whole other dramatic thing that happened to me is that after my neck fusion, I got, um, I 
I used this cream that was completely, um, it was just contaminated. Yeah. And it's like, you know, it's one of those things that like no one could have ever known. Predicted, yeah. Yeah. It just yeah. wanted like one in a billion things, you know, like, like who, me getting my neck. I mean, just this weird things that happened. Like, and like, so my whole back got completely fucked up with, with a uh, staff and I had like gnarly as the, gnar- it looked like someone shot me with a bird shot. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And, so, crazy. and I went to the dermatologist and she just like, you know I mean? I was on antibiotics for three and a half months. Wow. Creams, like soaps, all kinds of stuff to get rid of it. And it just left this heavy scarring. And um, she was just, she, I mean, she like teared up. She was telling me, she's like, I've never seen scarring this bad. It's going to be really hard to get rid of it. I don't know what to tell you. Like this, I'm, I'm really sad. And I'm like, sad for what? Right. And she's like, well, I don't know what you want to do. And I go, well, I could tattoo over it, right? She's like, it's your whole back. Right. And I go, cool. I'll go tomorrow. And I can <laughs> stab for seven hours straight. Yeah. Multiple times got it done in one month. My whole fucking back. I, know. I did my whole back in one month. That's whole thing. Insane. And some of my arms too. I sat there and just got So you're covered out. in tattoos. What was the worst place in your body pain wise? Or or did not, none of them bother you given given your lifestyle? Or was no, there... I mean they suck. I mean like it's just like I'm not gonna ribs. say it's like I don't have my ribs now. Okay. But I just have uh, my arms, I got my whole back, I got my leg. Um Random, parts random of my back, back hurt. Yeah, you know, um, I don't know though. I guess, I guess it's just one of those things that, like, in the moment you kind of feel it, right? But then, like, when I get tattooed, also I kind of weirdly. So I do this thing. Zone out. Yeah, yeah. I've got this whole process I do when I get tattooed. It's just I. It's I pretend I'm on an airplane. Hmm. That's it. I put my, I don't talk to my guy. Like some people like to have conversations. Right, right. I, I go. There's two reasons why I don't do it because I want him to concentrate. As right. an artist, I would right. want someone talking to me. Right. And. Um, I kind of want to get it. I mean, I think it speeds up the process personally. Right. And I trust him and the guy I've been working with for a long time. And I put my headphones on, I put a movie on and I sit there and I watch the movie like I'm on an airplane. That's interesting. So I look at it like I'm on a flight to New York. Right. I got a seven hour flight. Yep. And then I, and I change my movie. I'll go through some emails with music on and I just zone out and I just let them go. And sometimes I'll go like that, you know, cause if he hits something. Right. <laughs> but then I'll just keep, just keep going and the next thing you know he'll be like okay I'm done and that's how we got through it and that's how we got through that whole gigantic back piece so many lessons on this podcast I hope I hope people respond to this because this is uh, a few times a few times while you were talking I was going I can't wait for my kids to hear this because there's there's you know there aren't a lot of mentors in the world and these days people are selling mentorships like everywhere you fucking turn there's yeah. some like 21 year old kid who's <laughs> selling a product on like how i became successful yeah right and i'm like well, you're 21 what the fuck are you talking about like you know so uh um this is uh i do kind of trip out on that there's a couple guys that are out there that i've seen that i'm st- like i'm like <laughs> i don't even want to mention their names but i'll just say that like i'm just like i'm enamored by the fact that they figured out the keys to greatness right and because I don't know what those keys are. And I'm right. not saying that I have any clue how that even works. I just know, again, like, it's a fucking proven principle. If you work hard, you really put your mind to it, you will get closer to achieving something that is going to be a tangible goal for you. You know what I mean? And that's just something, like I said, like that I was built into me a long time ago. And I, and I think that it's been lost amongst generations because... There's a lot of different reasons. I think video games play a major role in that. I think that um, the the onslaught of, of technology has majorly killed it. And, you know, you have this thing. It's I call it the contr- it's, it's called the control Z life. Okay. You know what that means? No. So when you control Z out of stuff, you know, like you go backwards. Okay. So everybody wants to be able to go backwards and everybody wants to be able to go, oh, I'm just going to redo that. Right. You know what I mean? Because guess what? I got an iPhone. I shoot film forever, right? Couldn't fucking redo my film. But I could redo that photo. Mm-hmm. You know? Because it's on this. Oh, here you go. Oh, here you go. Right. It's- and it's and it's just this, it's just like this, like this, this life of just like being able to do redos and like, like, oh, things don't matter as much. They don't matter. Yeah, it does matter. Yeah. It fucking does matter. Everything matters. You going in a cry closet fucking matters. I'm never going to hire you if you go in that damn closet because what's going to happen next? You know what I mean? Like yeah. you're gonna you're gonna get super upset at me and like all of a sudden call me out like for something that is super. You know what I mean? Like that's the thing is that like 
I mean, I, I am just baffled. And this is another tantrum. I'm baffled at the fact that you have these people that are coming out years and years and years and years and years later for these little things. And like, this guy emotionally distressed me or this guy did this or I was like, like really? You're still fucking alive. You know what I mean? Like, you seem to have lived a pretty good life. Like, what the fuck? Let it go. Right, right. There's a point where let it go. You know what? I mean, like, it, I get it. If this guy, like, like physic, I mean, like, something major, you know, and, and somehow you figured out how to convict him and you've been working on it forever. Right. You know, you got this evidence behind you. But if it's, like, these little, like, allegations of, like, this guy called me a bad name once. Mm-hmm. He needs to go to jail. You know? like. But even all this stuff, dude, not to, and again, you know, this, this might light a fire because I'm not, I teach self-defense and we, you know, we teach, we teach women, we teach rape prevention, stuff like this. So this is, but this whole, that whole me too thing of, uh, totally, if it feels manipulated, that's the problem. Yeah. If you're, if you're manipulating something to draw attention, uh, you know, to yourself and, and we probably shouldn't even talk about it, but, uh, talk about whatever you yeah, want, man. Yeah. I'll tell you what I I, my, it. my cry closet is only going to be here tomorrow. Yeah. So it's, I ordered one just in case. Is it next to the sauna? Yeah, it'll be next to the sauna. Actually, I could use the sauna. I could cancel that and I could cry in the sauna and nobody would notice. No. Because I'm sweating already. Yeah, it's, just, it's like a, an extended cry. Right, right. It's a just, deeper. Yeah. Deep, it's a real deep infrared real, cry. An infrared <laughs> cry. Yeah, no, I hear you. And, and uh, you know, to me, the running theme throughout our talk today is, is about, you know, there is no resiliency if there's no work ethic first. You can't have no. resiliency if you don't have work ethic and you're not a... Uh, um, afraid to figure shit out. That's the other thing. And it's when I was thinking, you know, man, I want my kids to listen to this because the little the little nuggets are super subtle, Hans. They're, they're not like you're not like you're going. And here's a you know a, a maxim that I read in a fortune cookie. Memorize this. They're 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 subtle. You know, be passionate about. Uh, the things you're passionate about and you know that that's kind of an intuitive instinctive thing you see something and you go I want to do that I want to be part of that um, I think that's that's huge and then recognizing that you just can't you know there's no app for that it's it's fucking hard work and you gotta you gotta dig in and and there are going to be obstacles and there are going to be challenges and and that is what makes it special is that you work your fucking ass off for something and and I know this will Will, will trigger a rant because it's for me people have you know they'll they'll see me like doing some shit and uh you know some trip somewhere or you know i'll check in and and i always get usually i always get i've, I've trained my audience not to ever say this anymore because i always post a rant uh whenever somebody says you're so lucky <laughs> and and uh yeah. and i'm like I dude just don't think it exists. right i'm very very i'm a anti-luck kind of person you know what I mean? It's everything is there is there is like I said there's there's measurements and there's all these things that happen that make luck doesn't exist. You know, it's like these yeah random incidents and in time happen, but I just don't believe in luck. I just don't. Yeah. Yeah. You know? I I I look at it as as you know you're having an outdoor wedding and it doesn't rain. That's good luck. But the fact that you. Yeah, but, but hold on, and it doesn't rain. Again, look, I'm going to go back and, and go, all right, well, this is the thing. I'm looking at the weather report. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I mean, like, are you seeing this in the event that, like, you planned your wedding three months ago, and then all of a sudden this yeah, happens? Yeah, yeah, you know? no, I'm, I'm, yeah. No, I'm, I'm, I'm being superficial. Yeah. Where What I'm talking about is, like, oh, we're so lucky it didn't rain on our wedding. No, the the you're you're diminishing the fact that, you met someone, worked hard on a relationship, decided to get married, picked this location. Like, like that was all the work that got there. Mm-hmm. The fucking, you can't, because what I'm saying is we can't control the weather. No, right? but but we also have the ability to forecast it. And that's the thing is we could forecast things in life. We mm-hmm. can. We can look at things. Yeah, we can't predict the weather. You know, we, yeah, you met somebody, you want to have a destination wedding, you go to Hawaii, and you're like, all of a sudden, like, the, like you're, you're going there. You're probably going to get there a week before and you're probably going to have an idea that in that week it's calling for rain. So maybe, maybe you should probably think about bringing it inside, right? Mm -hmm. And that's just the thing is that you have to make those moves. Yeah, Yeah, you have to make things move. You have to think about 
you know, how you change the situation for your benefit and not fucking get upset because what you wanted to have happen didn't happen. You move it around. And guess what? Your friends are still going to be happy. You're still going to get married and you're going to walk away and you're still going to be alive. That's my point is that like there are ways you can forecast and you can educate yourself and you can look at things and go, just because I didn't get this doesn't mean that I can't figure out how to get this. Right. And that's just Do, do you, do you, is that intuitive to you or do you now as a experienced uh, business person, uh, do you have plan B's when you look at stuff or you anticipate? Plan B's and plan C's. You know, but I also, I, I also am never emotionally connected to anything when it comes to like an event or something. I just can't, mm. you know I mean? Like it, nothing's ever going to go according to plan. You'll learn that when you do this kind of stuff. Nothing's ever going to go perfect. Right. And as long as you understand that like the result, the end result, what you're trying to achieve, if you get that, there's going to be different ways to get it. You know, and like you're that, 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 you know, that map that you have that says you have to go this way. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe you want to, you know, click, you know, route number two or route number three, because guess what? Those were routes available to get there. Right. And, you know, route number one, you know, there says there's going to be some, you know, potential road work ahead. Go route two, you know, and just get there and not think about it. Like don't work, don't work yourself up over something. And that's a, that's a major issue that we have in today's society is that, you know, it has to be a certain way. It doesn't have to be any way. Mm -hmm. It has to be, it has to, I mean, there has to be a completion, right? You got to get the job done. But how that job gets done, hey man, like I'm not going to tell you how to do your job. Just get the job done. Right. You know, get it done right. Get it done clean. Get it done in a way that like, you know, when we're looking at the final product, it works. But don't get hung up about having to take one route. There's going to be other ways to do it. You know, and, you know, in, in designing a, a, a logo or shooting a photo or um, writing a story, whatever it may be, there are multiple ways to get that job done. And I've just learned that I'll never, ever get hung up on going one route. You got to take other routes sometimes. And as long as you condition yourself and you train yourself that way. I think that it makes things a little bit easier to get the job done. I dig it. Yeah. This, uh, so the name of this podcast, of course, is No Fear, K-N-O-W, Fear. If somebody listening to you, the, the confidence in your voice, the stories, the people, the fighting, the surgeries, the rehab, the all the stuff, they would think that like you were one of those rare humans that was... Uh, born without this fear gene element mm -hmm. uh, how do you relate to fear how do you talk about fear it's, it's just that is it like look there's the fear comes in different ways like so and this happens a lot with a lot of athletes and just people that that just kind of like look at things or define things differently is that like I've never had an issue paddling out into large surf ever like it it, it doesn't scare me to get in, the, first of all, it scares a lot of people to get in the water, right? Mm -hmm. Second, second, if it's, if it's cold water, even more. Third, if there's huge waves, fuck that, I'm not going out. Fourth, if it's getting dark, no fucking way, right. you know. But for me, and for a lot of other people that surf or that have been in, in like born and bred in, in the water, and like always, when you see like a magnificent wave out there, you go, I just want to anything, just get out there to ride that thing, right? Mm -hmm. If you go, or or if you want to, you know, if you're a snowboarder, you're like, oh, dude perfect powder even though it's getting dark I gotta write up a dark lift all these different things right mm -hmm. like a lot of people are like but so again it's the fear that I've always had was you know it's, it's just how I performed this is the thing so mm -hmm. this is the difference is that I have more fear about how I ride the wave mm -hmm. than actually getting out to the wave mm -hmm. it's how I how I like so so mentally I'm like okay I just don't want to blow it. I don't want to catch this wave and blow it, you know, and like just ruin it and let the wave go. Mm -hmm. That's the fear is I don't want to blow the opportunity. And mm -hmm. so I, I deal with that daily, like on every single thing, every project, everything, every person, everything. I, I don't want to blow the opportunity. I don't want to miss coming here and sitting down with you. Like, I don't want to miss that opportunity. So the fear is like, how do I balance the time? How do I get this? Because Obviously, I'm not scared to talk. Right, <laughs> you know what I mean? Right, like, right. I just freaking just ran it on forever. Right. But 
you know, like it, it's it's like okay, how do I make this happen? And, and like getting here and getting it done, and not like you know, like messing up that way. And that has always been my fear. And like my so, I mean, like I live in. I mean, it's safe to say that I live in constant fear, so that I can con- continuously get better at doing the things mm-hmm. I'm trying to do. And it's very, very like like it. Like I, I, I think about it all the time. You know, like, okay, I don't want, like, you know, I, I mentioned this to you before. It's like, just for, for instance, like social media, Instagram, whatever. It's like putting a post out before I used to, cause I used to write for a magazine too. And I mean, this is bringing it way back, you know, but like, so what if my photos and what if my, what if my, you know, like my story, like just gets perceived, like, you know, like, you know what I mean? Like, what right. if I blow it? What if I do this? What if I do that? Or if, what if somebody reads it and they think it, they, they, it comes out wrong or they think that I'm just, you know, like it just, you know, mm-hmm. those are my fears. Like, like, like. I just want to, like, what if they can't understand it? Like, what if they can't understand what I'm putting out? Like, this post, I'm trying to, you know, I'm trying to, like, explain. And sometimes I have to dumb it down. Sometimes I have to explain it. Sometimes I, I even catch myself and I'll utilize some vocabulary. I'm like, I don't even know if they know what this means. Right. You know what I mean? It's right. like, and, like, I've, I'll do that. I'm like, oh, man. Like, so the, the fear comes down to, like, where is this at? You mm-hmm. know, like, how do I, how do I place this? One of the things that, that we talk about in our in our no fear, you know, workshops and stuff is how you look at fear. Like everybody feels fear, and there, there's that moment when you get that physiological sensation, and there's fear there. And the the two obvious reactions are one is that it's debilitating or it slows you down or it makes you hesitate, and the other are the people that use it as a fuel mm-hmm. to drive them. And that happens uh, sometimes as a cognitive shift where there, people go, so oh, I recognize that I'm going to use this. Mm-hmm. And a lot of times it's just very, very subtle. And it sounds to me like, like you, like the, the, you're really an artist who's also figured out business uh, and had, a, and had to thrive and survive in that. And it sounds when, when you're describing, you know, like your thoughts on second place versus first place. Yeah. Right. Uh, that that was it is like, like second place is not even an option. No, it just didn't work out. That's how I look at it. Right. It just didn't happen. You right. know what I mean? Like, so like, and that's just how it's, that's my dad right there. It's like, I'm just like, yeah. So you didn't get first place. Okay. When are you going to do it again? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, right. well, how many people are in the event? 300. What'd you get? Second. So when are you going to do it again? Right. Or how come you didn't get first? Uh, all right. Okay. <laughs> I got to fucking win. You know, and it's just, it's just an underlining effect of just like going, I've got to, I've got to stay on my fucking toes. I got to keep my fucking blade sharp and I got to make sure that over and over and over that I'm not, I'm not relaxing and I'm not getting, you know, in this weird lethargic stage of just like not caring, Mm -hmm. you know, you got to care. And, you know, back on the, you know, like with, you know, with the fear aspect for me, it's just, it's just that like, if I have to, I want to feel that fear. And if I feel it and I feel it when I'm posting up a photo or, you know, like I said, like it's just, That's if I'm great. putting it, if I'm putting a video up, I mean, I'm doing something. And I know for a fact that I'm questioning, fuck, I think I look a little weird doing this, but I'm going to put it up anyway. And then I see a couple comments that right. kind of like, kind of like put me in that spot. Like, I'm right. Like, okay. So what I'll do is... I'll immediately go and do another post real quick just to show that I don't give a fuck. And it's, but it's not like I want to do it. Right. I just have to do it. Right. And so that, and then huh. I'll do it again. And so like, I'll see these, you'll see these like ones that stack up and then I'm just like, and then, you know, like, and, and, and cause what I'm doing is I'm basically, I'm basically moving myself up. Right. Like I'm not getting stuck here going, I'm not sure. I'm not going to quiet cross. I'm not gonna, like, cause I mean, that's it. Right. Otherwise, if I let that defeat me, if I sit there and I just dwell on it, I'm like, I'm just never going to post again. Right. I'm so sad. I'm never going to do it again. Right. I'm just going to go cry in the closet. You know, I'm right. just not going to do it again. I can't, I can't subject myself to this. I'm just not going to do it. That's the issue. That's what people get to. Yeah. And that's the thing is you got to get over it. And that sometimes that means going and doing it again. Do it again. You know what I mean? Just do it again. Just fucking do it again. And, and sometimes you can't do it again immediately. Right. But you got to wait for that opportunity and then do it. You know, and that's the thing is that that's where, you have to wait. You got to be patient. Patience is a huge factor in business. I mean, no one seems to want to talk about it anymore. Like patience is everything. Mm-hmm. Got to be patient. It's not going to happen in a week. It's not going to happen in a day. Tactical you know? patience, man. You know, and that's uh, you know, it's just I'm forty 
one years old and you know I do get that you know when you're saying talking about like this oh you're, you live this lucky lifestyle you're so lucky like I can't believe you get to meet these people and you, you think that like it was just random luck that I taught myself how to shoot photos in 1994 and I've continued to do it for many years and that you know I just happened to be shooting you know these like pivotal athletes you know because I was involved that's not luck right that's foresight and I mean I, I still like you know it's like I mean it's just the, the you know I mean it's not it, it you acquire skills and if you can use them and utilize them in certain ways they're gonna benefit you but you know what's luck I mean like I guess if you've got to say there's really luck I mean that's just for some odd reason like you just happen to push a button and something magical happens mm-hmm. then then again that's just chance to me right but I mean like that doesn't normally happen right you know, it doesn't normally. I mean, so don't think you're going to win the lottery more, basically. Don't rely on that. No, I dig it, man. I yeah. dig it. Um, do you have people hitting you up for any type of, I mean, obviously, you probably get hit up all the time. Yeah. Uh, jobs, introductions, shit like that. But any legit uh, mentoring things? And what I mean by, by well, you can answer it however you want, but like, is it something that, that, that you do recognizing that you I do I get people hitting, like I get the DMs all the time you know and they'll ask questions and I'll answer them like I mean like if it's legit and I see that the person especially I mean I get I get a lot of ones for back stuff back and neck stuff all the time you know but um and then I get a lot of business ones in photography too but I mean um it, I, I I will always take the time and, and because I do believe that like you need to you need to pay it for it you gotta like mm-hmm. like I'm not I mean like I mean, there's a point where, like, I, I want to help. I mean, I'm not going to give everything away forever, you know. Right. But, I mean, like, if there's just, like, a, a just a, you know, if, if I could create that, like, I usually do one. Like, I won't keep going on and on. But, I mean, like, you know, like, I, if I could help that one person to get them over that little bit of a hill and then they could start figuring it out on their own, then, you know, hopefully I influence that person in a way that they're like, damn, dude, that's cool. Thanks, man. I think this talk is going to. I think there's a lot of, you know, as amazing as Instagram is and stuff like that I mean it's it's uh, you know fleeting you know you pop it you look at you, you you miss a day you miss a you know you get distracted if people sit down and listen to this I know I've I've you've reframed a few things in me because I I have that same thing where when I get an idea for a post that's connected to a story and a message uh, and you know like I'll be late for dinner. I'm like, I gotta, I gotta finish this. There's this urgency. Um, but I realized that, that, uh, I I like the way that you reframed, uh, fear in that, and that it was, it was fear of, of like achieving that X, the execution, the standard that you hold yourself to, as opposed to some other fear. And it, it, it it had a little switch in me. It's, it's be interesting to see, uh, how, uh, how I reframe that because I have that, that, that same thing where I'll get an idea for something and I got to do it now. And I'm juggling my internal fear, uh, with how it's going to, how it's going to play out. And mm-hmm. sometimes, and sometimes I think even for myself, as much as I've studied fear, I focus too much on what if this doesn't come out like I want, as opposed to Just doing this, it. this is, this is going to come out. Yeah, it will. But I mean, again, you know, and I think I'm sure you know this though too, is that, I mean, like it, everyone's built differently. They just are, you know I mean? Like I do believe like, you know, I mean, there's been so many of those crazy studies about like what the warrior gene and stuff like that. And right. just like these, like, I think that, um, a lot of it is hereditary. And I think that where you get it from and just like how your, your story plays out is that, I mean, there's, I mean, like we're, we're, you and I are sitting here, but like we come from somewhere, right? right? And when I say we come from somewhere, is that like in a hundred years, there's going to be another person that's direct lineage of me that could be sitting in a freaking spaceship somewhere doing a weird podcast or something. You know what right. I mean? Like right. saying like, and knowing that there was this, like maybe not even knowing all the way back that right. there was somebody else that was just like them. So like me, like there was probably someone a hundred years ago, 200 years ago, three hundred, four, five thousands of years ago right that's um, i'm a part of a lineage that like just got you there and that's not everybody though right it's just not so 
You know, I mean, how do you make that? And how do you, you mean, like, you adjust the way you can, right? Like, I'm not going to say this. I'll say this right now, and I'll be open about this. Like, I do 110% believe that, yes, I do believe that there is a certain thing about certain people that they have parts of them, like, is not normal, (laughs) right? Right? Like, I'm not normal in the sense that I will get in and jump into a ring and not care with anybody and I, or jump on a motorcycle or paddle on big waist. That is not normal, right? Right. Um, where that really comes from, I really don't know. You know, I mean, and, and it also comes down to the fact that like I will sit down with you and I'll sit down with um, Dan White or I'll sit down with the president of the Hells Angels and it doesn't matter to me who they are. Right. It, it never has. And I've had, ironically, I've sat down with all of them. And it's, it, it doesn't phase me and I'm not nervous. And they're just like, hey, where a lot of people do get like, oh my God. Like, sure. I guess, I, and, and I think that I've always kind of like thought about it in a way that like they're no different than me. They came from the same place. Like, we were all kids one time. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, and we all, like, we all kind of carved our paths. But there was a certain point, like, where we all started and we all were very much equals. Right. Hmm. Like mentally, at least, you know, physically, look, things change for certain people. But, you know, like when we were all four years old or five or three years old, too, we were all, I mean, it's pretty even playing ground right there. Right. right. You right. know, and so that's how I randomly pick, pick it back. Now, this guy was a three year old once, too. That's fascinating. You know what I mean? And so, no, so that's, a, that breaks walls down. Yeah. And so, like I, like, I mean, I've had a lot of people, like, I've been with people, like, oh my God, we got to go meet, we got to go meet these guys. Like, are you nervous? And I'm like, no, they should be nervous to meet me. And I always kind of right, like right, do right. that thing. Like, 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 because why wouldn't they be? Like, why would I be nervous to meet them? Like, what do they possess or what do they have that's going to, like, make me that nervous? Like, I don't see anything like that. Like, I, I try to structure my life so that I'm not ever relying on somebody. Right. You know, so, and I say that in a way that, like, I mean, outside of my wife and my kids, I can give a shit about wherever anyone else, whatever anyone else does or what they do. That's them them. So how they affect me is that, like, are you, are you saying that they're going to try to kill me? <laughs> like, because then this is a different conversation. Right, right. You know, but if we're just going to a meeting and we're just going to, like, you know, and this is one of those things that a lot of people have issues with going to interviews. So this is a big one for interviews, mm-hmm. right? And is that they're so nervous to go to an interview or they're super nervous to talk in front of people. But the one thing that's always worked for me, man, is imagine that they're three years old. That's we're amazing. Fucking, we're both three years old at one point in time, you know. So I, when I go and I do talks, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna only assume that you have no issue talking in front of people. I know right. you don't. Right. I don't know what what mechanism you use, but for me, as I see a bunch of three year olds, I'm like, <laughs> I'm just talking to three year olds, and and so it just, I, it just, I naturally just keep talking and keep going, and it's nothing, you know, it's nothing. But the fear, remember, for me, mm-hmm. is when I go back. And I start watching. I'm like, oh, dude, I hated how I looked on that one. Or I was, I feel like I was, ta- like my, I wasn't pronouncing words right. That's the fear. Right. So it's my performance. It's always the performance. Like I don't give a shit. I'll like, oh wow, pipeline is freaking huge. It's third reef. You know, oh my, it's it's heavy duty. Like how do I'm so scared of pipeline. No, no, no. It's I'm like, okay, I'm gonna get it out there. I'll figure out how to get out there. But what if I just fall and everyone's watching <laughs> that's my fear is that's performance awesome you know so so what do i do is, is that i practice make sure that i'm good at what i'm doing and like it's that complete like 100 percent repetitive like you gotta just keep doing it it's know? funny you made me think you know one of the one of the concepts that we we teach and talk about in our trainer development is the difference between competence and confidence and that everybody is, and I'll ask people right off, I'll go, don't, don't overthink this answer quickly. Would you rather be competent or confident? And most people go confident. And I go, well, let me, let me explain this a little bit differently. There's lots of overconfident people who fuck up because yeah. their skill set was in their belief, yeah, not in their skill set. Yeah. And, and uh, I go, someone who's really competent, who has their shit together, is also confident. Absolutely. You know, so. I'll give you a quick story about this too. I mean, then I'll, I'll wrap it up a little bit. But this is the thing: is that so? 
and I'll say this, and you can, and he's gonna fucking kill me for saying this shit, but I'll be straight up on it too. Is that we were in Australia, and I was there with John Wayne Parr and Chris Weidman, UFC mm-hmm. former UFC middleweight champion, and we showed up, and they didn't know this by the way. So we show up to a wave pool, a standing wave pool, not mm-hmm. a normal wave pool, but mm-hmm. like a flow rider wave pool, and we get there. And immediately, it's like the competition starts. Mm-hmm. Chris and I, because we're, we're hyper competitive people, and like, and John is like one of these guys. He's he's competitive, but he's just like, yeah, whatever. He's that guy, and he's good at everything. So he's not even thinking about. But Chris and I, it's like now this is an even playing ground for Chris and I because we we're training together. He's you know like like you know everything was just a, a game for us. But he didn't know, he didn't know my surfing background, <laughs> and so but for me. So, so his thing is that he didn't know how to surf, right? And he's thinking that we're on the same stage. So now his confidence is like, okay, is he going to be like better than me because he's better at balance or whatever? And what my fear was is that I do know how to surf. But my fear was is that I didn't want to look goofy when I was doing it. I wanted to show that I really knew how to do it. That was my fear. Mm-hmm. Was, I would, and remember, so this is just, like, we're talking four months. Out. So well, the craziest part is this, is that, you know, Chris has major injuries too. Mm-hmm. And I'm coming off of a fused neck, neck and fused back. My neck is only four or five months fused at this point. And we're talking about, I'll show you the thing, a rushing wave that you have to wear a helmet wearing it. And people right. like, a normal person like, I am not going to go on that fucking that thing, if you fall on that, you can break your neck. That's right. what someone would think, right? I'm not even thinking that. I'm not even thinking about my neck. I'm not thinking about my back. I'm not thinking about falling. I'm just thinking about, I better fucking look good. So I look so. So when I do this, I just look. I just look. I'm just so much better than him. Right. That's all I'm thinking about. And of course, like I fucking smoke him on it. And he falls down and eat shit and like. Right. And I leave and I'm 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 stoked and like I'm rubbing it into this. Oh, day. by the way, yeah. You know, and uh, and it's just, but that's just it. Is that like that's where. And he was, like I said, like neither of us, and that's where I think that, that we are very similar on that. And like, that's, there's that weird component in our brains. Like neither of us were looking at the actual obstacle. We were looking at, like, for me, like, like he was looking at, like, I just need to be able to get on top of the obstacle. Mm-hmm. And I'm just looking at it like, I just want to look good getting on, because I know how to get on it. I just want to look really right. good getting on it, because I don't want to look weird. And that's just the, the style points that I always have to have in on the shit I do. Yeah, there's, there's an old quote. Uh, I don't know who said it, anonymous said it, uh, art is never done. And it's, you know, when you're thinking like an artist, at some point you just let it go. And that is, oh, yeah. you know, but, but it's, that's, that's kind of, re- you remind me of that as how you live your life. Because, you know, when it's three to one go, it's just, you've can, you've built and created everything you could to that moment for the meeting, for the, photo- you know, for the picture, for the, for the website, for the, for the product. And it's just art, 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 art. As, as as amazing and meticulous as you can be and then you launch and then what do you learn from it and you go from there um, but it's all art right but the, the meetings are art everything's art it's all it, to me it's all play anyway you know what I mean like this whole game like what we're doing this is a play like this is this is us like perf- we're performing art by talking to each other you know it's right. like right. It's, it's, it's just like in, in and that's what I've convinced myself in life anyway and that's how it works is that like this is all art like, I mean, my, my, me having a conversation with you is art. We're, we're doing spoken word together. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, this is like art. Like, I mean, I want to be able to, and see, I want to be able to like have these deep conversations that mean something that's art, you know? Mm-hmm. And like, that's just it. Like, if, like, I, I think that that's the thing that drives me and that's how I've been able to cross business and, and you know, whatever my photography and all the other like traditional art that I do mm-hmm. is that I look and I combine them together. It's not normal, actually. Like, there isn't many guys no, that like not. that do like traditional art and then actually want to do business. Like in, them, in, you know? in, in, I think one of the uh, you posted one day is where we connected about our guitars. Where like I saw you doing all these things, and then I think I think I private messaged you when I saw you pull out a guitar. I was like, "Are you kidding me? You play guitar too?" And 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 it's so you're uh, you know most most people modern modern society don't know what a renaissance man is right yeah, but yeah. but back then of like you know the, the you know whether it was the samurai that could write poetry yeah. and and do the tea ceremony and also cut your head off right yeah, yeah. you know it was uh but uh that's that's what you remind me about man just uh but see seems- but that's see that's another fear that i have by the way is even playing guitar like so because my hands because this hand is messed up right like it's like i it's 
my, I've got nerve damage from right. my neck that right. right? flows through my pec, down to my tri- or tricep, down my arm, down my... So my my fingers don't move as well. Right. Like this, these fingers move fine, right. but I can't move my fingers like I used to. And plus the arthritis from punching and all these different things. So I look at myself, so even though I could play all the songs and I could do all these things, and the sound comes out the same. Right. I What I'm doing is I'm just looking at my hand. I'm right. Going, I don't like how my hands move, right. but I'm still going to put it up. Right. You know, and no one has ever said anything. Like right. no one ever goes, you, your hands are moving weird on the guitar. Right. But like I see it in a way that like I'm like oh, I don't like because like I used to do things differently. You right. Know? And you know, so I mean, that's the thing is that like, but I'll, I'll te- I mean, I did it the other day, and I'll just continuously put those things out there. It's not to it's not to get over the fear. It's like to like to eliminate the fear. It's just to like embrace it almost. It's like mm-hmm. embracing the fear. And that's embrace what you, the yeah, fear. You get, sometimes yeah. you got to just do that. Like you gotta you gotta channel it and utilize it for your own positive energy to you know put it back in the world so that like it's it's like almost like just you're recharging mm-hmm. you know and that's just uh i you know i mean it just works for me i guess no i dig it i use it use your fear that's yeah use it. dude let's wrap on that note i know you got to go get your kid and do some stuff we'll uh we'll do this again yeah anytime i appreciate I love it, it. Hans. Happy birthday. Thank Happy you, 68th birthday. <laughs> I'm not 68. <laughs> okay, buddy. Thank you.